done. I know there's quite a, probably a bit of a jump from the last scene to this, but it's it's not rocket science, guys. Really, um, I'll bring you in and show you a few of the little features that I've put into this. So the fr the whole frame is just off the ground by about two and a half, three inches, and I simply welded this two inch box section steel on the sides and on the back of the webbing and I, mount, I wanted to mount the casters so they were not so the whole frame wasn't too high in the air so I kind of welded that plate on the top which uh, kind of lowers the casters a little so I did that on both sides put that framing in the rams held in place although it doesn't really need this I put that just kind of lightweight plate on the bottom just really to stop the ram moving in and out of the frame and um, the weight of this ram alone is enough to keep it down and in place and then the next section is uh, really heavy duty um, half inch and quarter plate so it's three quarters of an inch of steel I had a nightmare drilling these 40 millimeter holes for that uh, clevis pin in there but I ended up destroying three hole saws um, and the last one I bought a Bosch hole saw which just did it with, that, with, e with ease, no problem whatsoever. Uh, the linkage for the ram is there for the actuator and it just, you can maybe just see it there on the back. That's what actually operates the ram itself. That's off that real heavy checker plate foot treadle there. That's just simply got a disc on so I can take this on and off for when I'm moving the actual thing around. I could also extend this upwards if I wanted to so I could put a handle on the top of the ram there but I really, you know, I've, I've designed this to just use it off the foot pedal so it doesn't need it. These blocks were again with the RSJs and I've welded a 3 8 thick plate in there to stop that web crushing then I've used some real heavy duty angle iron there wrapped it around and drilled and tapped and bolted it into the actual plate on the side so that, that, that completely wraps around the webbing of the frame and it's really secure, it's nice. The the, uh, the dies are held in place with them, just them little sliders which I've got on my other forging press. Um, they'll go in either way. So if I make a die that runs across, it can then be turned around so I can forge and flatten out the, let the blade jot down its length. Uh, top top die is the same. That just that just operates off that there. So it's up to bring it out and back to close it. I've got two switches on here. This switch actually puts turns the VFD on and off, and the top switch is just literally just for the RAM to turn the RAM on and off as I need it. So I'll probably most of the time the VFD will be running when I'm forging. Um, and I'll just turn the motor on and off as I need it. Around the back here to the power pack. Um, that's bolted and welded. A quarter, a quarter inch steel, steel plate for the power pack to sit on there. Which is bolted through that frame underneath the power pack. And the power pack itself, the tank is also bolted through that two inch box section it's also welded as well so it can't come apart that um, I've made this metal casing or this metal box to house the VFD because I don't want the VFD getting covered in forge scale and rubbish put a perspex front on the front there 
uh, with a, just, a, just a seal to stop it sucking dust in. It needs another screw in there. Yeah, I forgot to put that one in. But yeah, the, the little foam seal will stop, stop the VFD sucking dust and crudding. Because uh, these VFDs do not like metal dust and metal particles being sucked in. It just fries the circuit boards on them. This back plate here to, to stop the die on. On my last one I ran that all the way across the back. Well you'll find if you do that, that as you're sliding these plates in and out, crud builds up here. And then when you come to close the plate it pushes the crud against the back. So you can never, you have to really start bashing these to get to get them in or clean the crud out the back. So that's why I've just put a single plate in the middle so that the crud can't build up or it's less less likely to build up on that. So there is pretty much the back there guys. I'm really pleased with it. I'm pleased with how it's come out. I've, I've really enjoyed building it as well. The foot pedal is just two pieces of checker plate with a couple of brackets on it. As I say, it attaches on that pin. There's a cylinder, five inch cylinder. I've only just finished this today. Um, I've not had a chance to put any metal in because as yet I've not made the actual dies. Um, which I am going to cut. Now I'm going to use a big old thick leaf spring for the first die I make. Uh, and then I will crack up the forge and I'll because I'll film this the first time in use um, and just see what this thing can do. So I reckon it's taken me possibly about four days start to finish uh, to work on it to get everything done. And as with always with these things, <clears throat> it's the little messing around things that take forever. Drilling and tapping M10 or M12s, M12 bolts or 12 millimeter bolts uh, through quarter plate. Well, that's three eighths plate that on the on the side of these. Uh, making all these little adjusters and caps and things like that. You know the mechanism for the to get the actual control valve working properly so you're not having to apply tons of force on this just you know just figuring out which is which is the best which is the best setup to get what you want uh, from your foot pedal um, took me took me best part of two or three hours today just to make that solid steel enclosure and weld it up so it's pretty much dust proof and um, airtight and then to wire all this because I'd wired it all once just to check everything was working to get the ram up and going up and down. So I've had to disconnect it all today to wire and put the VFD on the back and run all the cables in and fit these two switches. So it moves around really nicely. Not a problem with movement at all. So um, I like that. The casters are rated for 160 kilos each, which gives me four, six, 12, 24, four, five, 640 kilos. It's, it's probably about 500 kilos in weight, this thing now. So I am, uh, I am just below the weight that the casters can take by probably 50, 100 kilos, something like that. Um, Cost wise, I'm into possibly best part of £2,000 with this. Maybe slightly under. Yeah, the power pack was £1,000. The RAM was 530 I think. Uh, the steel cost me about £80. £80. The other bits of steel I already had. And then you've got things like the casters. Uh, I had to buy the hole saw to, to call. I bought four hole saws. But I only needed to buy one and that was the Bosch, which as I said, did a great job of cutting through that steel. Um, and then welding rods, peripherals, cutting discs. 
things like that. So yeah, probably a more accurate figure is probably about £1,800. That's what it's cost to build it. Anyway, I will make these two dies for this and uh, we'll squash some steel. I'm going to call it the Black Mamba. Because black was the only colour paint I had on my shelf. <laughs> my one remaining job on this is to fit a tray on this block um, that will prevent all the slag and crud dropping straight onto the motor. So I fitted this uh, tray for the slag and crud to just run off and not fall on the motor and the pack and the ram and the hoses. And I've just put those dies in there. I am ready now to try out this press. So I'm heating up an old leaf spring and we're going to see what the guy will do. The dies are cold so I don't expect a massive amount of squashing these dies are much better when they're warmed up a little bit. I'm not going to warm them because I'm going to try and see what this thing will do from cold. Stand by. Steel. <laughs> Amazing. Alright guys, second pass just absolutely gobsmacked by that. Second pass I'm going for a 45mm or inch and three quarter round bar. It's just in the forge now, we've got one end up to temperature. VFD on. Lithium crystal, activate. Run down and ready. I'm sorry guys but card A just filled up there just as I was forging that out. Um, still red hot but that's what kind of done with it. As I say it's inch and, inch and three quarter round bar. It's not mild steel it's a shaft of some kind of machine I found about a year or two back. Um, I was going to use this for the clevis pins but I couldn't turn it down on my lathe, I ended up buying some bar. But I am just so impressed with that, I really am. My God. I'm gonna call this forging press a success. I'm gonna think of a name of it. I'm gonna think of a name for it. Dies are just warm. 
Oh, wow. Can you see I'm <laughs> very happy? Damascus, here we come. No more days and days spent forging Damascus. I think San Mai stainless steel, San Mai is going to be pretty easy now. Just going to run it, run it through with one pass on here and just forge weld it, job done. So this is going to up my production just incredibly. Just, just wow. It's going to take a little bit of getting used to, uh, I think. I may just move, change the foot pedal a little bit, I think. Because it's it's just moving around. I mean it work it works okay. It's just moving around on the floor, so um, I may just find a way of just locking it down so it's not sliding about, you know. It wasn't a problem really. So that is it for this video, ladies and gentlemen. Very, very happy forger here, knife maker. I now need to get some steel ordered. I'm very, very low on Damascus steel. I've got very little. Um, but another good thing is I've got a, a, quite a bit of W2 bar, which is really too thick for most of my applications. It's 9mm thick. I'm just going to be able to forge it down in seconds now on this. Forge it down to a good knife thickness. So be able to make many more knives now out of that W2, I may as well use it up. I mean look at that, it just, it's just cooling down now. That was half an inch thick that leaf spring where I, where I crushed it. It just totally mullered it, absolutely mullered that like it wasn't there. There was just no resistance. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thanks, thanks guys, thanks to all my patrons who keep doggedly supporting me, I do appreciate it. Um, I've got a, for a lot, a lot of my patron guys are, are interested in rocket stuff, so I did say that I built a little sort of test pizza oven rocket thing made out of wood, because <laughs> I didn't want to cut some steel up, so I just built the thing out of wood and lit a fire in it and it worked great so I'm, I've got that video in the camera um, I need to delete all the footage off that card the card is full and I'm, I'm down to about an hour on the second card so uh, I'm, I'm gonna put that video on after this video goes on so you'll be able to see it and I'll, I'll explain how I built the thing so if you guys want to have a go and build something similar it just needs a, a little oven over the top of it or a casing and you can probably pizzas the arts content in it so uh all right all right chaps all right ladies and jack keep forgetting to say ladies i've been i've been told off for not saying ladies because apparently some ladies watching uh, watching <laughs> they get sick of me calling them guys <laughs> all right ladies i will see you quite soon bye for now